Hey, what up fish friends? I'm Michael with Fresh Flow Aquatics. In today's video, I'm going to go over how I set up this 45 gallon tank, talk a little bit about the plant choices, the fish, the equipment, and some of the issues I've dealt with, mainly algae over the last few months. This project has been a few years in the making. When I bought the tank, it was in really rough shape. The stand was looking even worse off. So I resealed it, built a new stand and canopy out of walnut and alder uh, veneer. It's just pine under there, uh, at least most spots. I put a lot of time into this project because I love the dimensions of this tank. You don't come across this style much anymore nowadays. Um, I don't know if I would do this again though. I spent a lot of time sanding. I started with some styrofoam on the bottom. I know that using granite is really heavy and I want a heavy hardscape in this so uh, the foam helps to protect the glass from the rocks by reducing the pressure points. Uh, if you look at like any little points of the rock that stick out, these are going to be spots where the majority of the weight is going to be pushing onto the glass and it can create cracks. The goal is to create a tall island in the middle with soil for the plants and then sand around the outside. It's going to be really steep so I need to use rock that fits together really tight. Uh, slowly piling them up. I know that I want to have one large rock jutting out sideways and one going up. I just keep messing around till I find what I want and then I add the main chunk of wood. I stop for a moment to look at my escape and make sure I like the way everything looks before I start gluing things in place. The paper towel and super glue trick are kind of a go to for me and many other aquascapers when it comes to gluing hardscape materials together. Really it's a very simple process, all you gotta do is take a little paper towel or napkin or cotton ball and shove it in between two contact points and then douse it down with liquid super glue. After about 10-15 seconds the paper towel should go rock solid. You'll see a little bit of steam come up indicating the chemical reaction has taken place and your objects should be secured together. I kept using this method at a bunch of different points until the structure felt really sturdy. Then I finished up the rock wall, filled in the gaps with some filter floss to make sure that the soil won't fall forward onto the sand. Make sure to be diligent if you're trying to create a barrier uh, to keep soil off of your sand. I really hate cleaning soil off of sand so I'm taking the time here to really plug up every hole and double check, go around, make sure that everywhere is blocked off so that no soil will pour forward onto the sand. With the main structure complete, it's time to add some details. Details can really make or break an awesome scape. In this case, adding roots to the chunk of wood really helped to bring things to life. Instead of looking like a blob of wood that someone clearly threw in this tank, it now looks like it's been growing here for decades. It's always a good idea to look to nature for inspiration. I think about how roots grow around rocks to stabilize a tree on a cliff. So I pick branches that follow along the rocks closely and fit perfectly into place. Then I add some sand. I'm going with pool filter sand because it's really soft and I know that there's going to be a bunch of coolie loaches in this tank and they appreciate digging around in some soft sand. Then some river pebbles and smaller chunks of granite just so that the main island doesn't look kind of alone and have such a stark contrast with the sand. Some finer detailing stones always help to kind of tie escape together. And then it's time to fill up the back with soil I'm using kind of a mix, I think some some um, fluval substratum because it was on sale and then I'll be topping it off with a mixture of a bunch of different substrates or soils, seachem fluorite, 
and some land in aqua soil uh, from a previous tank so that it's got all the bacteria in it and I should be able to cycle this tank really quickly. Then something that's kind of bugging me, I don't like all these spots where you can see how I've glued the roots down. So I came through and either stuck moss in or glued moss over it. A mixture of a few types of mosses, java moss, christmas moss, and phoenix moss. Since the planting process can take a while, it's a good idea to spray or mist out your mosses and plants that you've already got in place. It just helps to keep them a lot healthier and prevent any dieback during the process. I used a few stem plants in the back. The idea was to have a really lush garden of stems flowing over this kind of dead bonsai uh, chunk of wood up front. So I started with Limnophila hipparoides, a really fast grower, as well as Pogostamen stellatus, also extremely fast growing. And then Kabumba fricata, which is a really delicate, dainty, gorgeous looking orange version of Kabumba. It's not the fastest grower, but I want to add some color to this. And all three plants should have anywhere between orange to red and pink hues. About a month has passed since setting up this tank and things look okay, not that great to be honest. I've already dealt with a large brown hair algae bloom. Not surprising in a tank with sand and granite. I got more info on brown hair algae if you want to check this video out. Now I'm currently dealing with green hair algae. A um, little bit harder to deal with. I think that's a result of having such high lighting trying to reach the bottom of the tank and then the top has just got this hardscape that's just getting pelted. The moss is soaking up all of this algae. So what I'm going to do is uh, cover this branch in moss. Hopefully it'll help to absorb some of the light and nutrients and prevent the wood from getting coated. Another thing I want to change is the Pogo stamen stellatus in the back, it's just growing so fast, so it's overcrowding the plants on the side. I'm going to switch it out with some Rotala atra, a gorgeous plant that'll add a nice touch of orange to this tank. Another month down the road and the green hair algae is still an issue, probably even worse. <laughs> So tall tanks are always hard for me to deal with in terms of algae because I have a hard time getting light to go to the bottom um, where the plants, you know, the stem plants need it so that they can grow up to the top. So I've put the light on low and then plants have suffered. Then I put the lights on high and then the algae just goes like crazy. And now this moss is kind of wrecked. So start pulling the moss off and I notice that there's all this uh, fish turd in here and debris and waste and stuff. So that's kind of an issue. Um, I guess I should do a better job cleaning the moss out. I definitely don't want to leave this chunk of wood exposed to the light. So I'm going to try something new. I'm going to take some clippings from this tank and just shove a bunch of stem plants in here. Tie them around this chunk of wood. Hopefully they do a good job absorbing the light and repelling hair algae. Let's see how it looks a couple months down the road. Well here we are a couple months down the road and I feel really great with how things have turned out in this tank. I'm a little bit perplexed uh, as to how well these stem plants are doing. Uh, most of these are not even in the substrate so they are 100% obtaining their nutrients from the water column which kind of makes me wonder why even bother using substrate or spending money on it um, yeah something to think about I might try this or do some experiments in other tanks to see what I can get away with though I doubt that this would work with some of the more sensitive stem plants they just wouldn't grow that well as far as equipment goes, I have a Marineland MagniFlow 220 canister filter. It puts out just enough uh, gallons per hour to be about five times my tank uh, turnover volume per hour. 
Uh, honestly, it's not the best filter, but it's also not the worst. It was really cheap. I got it for like $70 on sale a while ago. Initially, I was not using CO2, but I did decide to start using it because of all the hair algae issues I've dealt with. And I'm using Nylock G's micro and macro um, fertilizers. They're working out pretty well. I like them, and the plants seem to be doing well too. And then for livestock, I have a school of Kubotai Raspora. They're absolutely gorgeous, vibrant, metallic green, and they're very hardy, outgoing. They always come up to me for food when I go up to the tank. And then a little harder to get footage of, but I have some Threadfin Rainbows in here, just females. Uh, the males didn't do well. Uh, they did not survive. I'm not sure why and I'm scared to get more because I don't want to kill them. And then some ram horn snails to keep things clean. They're also really fun to look at when you zoom in on them. Some green jade shrimp. Uh, when I ordered them I was expecting them to all be green but surprisingly a good mixture of yellow to green came in and I'm kind of enjoying the diversity. And then naturally a mono shrimp, the best algae eaters. They like to hang out in this little cave over here under this rock overhang. Probably my favorite members of the tank are the coolie loaches. They can be quite cryptic at times. They don't come out very often, but I always see them moving around in this little coolie castle between all the crevices, the nooks and crannies. As soon as I throw food in, they are out for it. They are hungry fish. They got really good noses on them. They know when I put food in. And even though I can't move quickly around them, they will still come out in the daytime to eat and let me film them and enjoy watching them. Um, coolie loaches are also fun because they wig people out who are afraid of snakes, but they're certainly not snakes and they are very peaceful, timid little fish. All in all, I'm super happy with how this tank has turned out. It's been a bit of a journey getting it to be somewhat algae free. That being said, there's still algae in here and I know I'll probably be fighting it uh, in the future. Thanks a lot for watching. Please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you did enjoy today's content. I appreciate it. Until next time, see ya!